Welcome to Peru Tech Future Vision YouTube channel. I am Dr. R. Perumal, Professor of Petrochemical Engineering, JCT College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore. In this video, we will discuss about the overall procedure and documentation required for NAC accreditation process. The NAC accreditation will become mandatory for all the higher education institution from the academic year 2022 onwards. So that all the higher education institutions are rushing to upgrade their institution to the next level by getting NAC accreditation. This video will emphasize more on the accreditation procedure pertaining to the affiliated institutions. Before going deep into the discussion, let me give you a brief introduction about NAC. The National Assessment and Accreditation Council is an autonomous agency funded by University Grants Commission. So, the NAC plays a vital role in assessing and grading the institution under four different categories with eight letter grade. This will enhance the continuous improvement of the quality of education in the higher education domain. Who can apply? There are two primary eligibility criteria for institution to apply for NAC. The first one is the institution must possess at least two batches of passed out students and the age of the institution must be six years or above. In addition to these two conditions, there is one prerequisite for registering for NAC accreditation, that is AISHE code number. In MHRD, they have developed a portal called All India Survey for Higher Education. All the institution has to register in the AISHE portal and participate in the survey. That code number is mandatory for applying NAC. These are the nomenclatures which we used in this presentation. NAC, National Assessment and Accreditation Council, AISHE, All India Survey for Higher Education, HEI, Higher Educational Institution, IAQA, Institutional Information for Quality Assessment, SSR, Self-Study Report, SESS, Student Satisfaction Survey, DVV, Data Validation and Verification, PTV, Peer Team Visit, the superscript R, revised as on 4th February 2020. That means in this presentation, I have mentioned the data as per the quality manual issued on March 2019. But the NAG Council now and then will amend the manual. The latest amendment is as on 4th 2020. Wherever I mentioned the revised data, I have superscripted that value in R. Then CR GPA is criteria grade point average. CRWGP is in criteria weighted grade point. So this flowchart explains the overall process for NAC accreditation. First, the higher education institution has to register in the NAC portal. Nowadays, the NAC accreditation process become online. So we have to apply online in the NAC portal by creating login ID and user ID. So after registration, we have to submit the IAQA, Institutional Information for Quality Assurance. This is the document we have to submit for submit online. Then the council will scrutinize the IAQA. Once the IAQA is accepted, we have to submit the SSR self-study report within 45 days. After the submission of self-study report, the student satisfaction survey will take place. During this survey, the council will select roughly around 500 to 600 students from our institution randomly and they will send a set of questions to the students through email. The student has to answer the questions and submit to the portal. So after this SSS, this student satisfaction carries some weightage during the assessment. So after this assessment, SSS, the DVB initiation will take place. The data validation and verification committee will scrutinize all the documents which we support along with the SSR and during the initiation if there is any queries or doubts or missing data or wrong entries 
the committee will send a clarification to the higher education institution the institution has to respond the clarification after the response of the clarification the dvv assessment will take place the dvv assessment is over peer team visit will be executed and member of expert committee member will visit the institution and they will assess the institution for accreditation so combining the peer team visit and the dvv we will get accreditation this is the evaluation pattern of the nac the evaluation pattern is divided into online evaluation and on site evaluation during the online evaluation 70% of the assessment will be completed by the data validation and visitation committee they will not visit the institution without inst visiting the institution they will scrutinize all the documents which we have sub submitted along with the ssr then after the 70% valuation is over a peer team visit will be executed the remaining 30% evaluation will be done by the peer team committee then combining this peer team evaluation dvv evaluation we will get accreditation these are the seven criteria framed by the nac under the seven criteria only all the assessment will be carried out so criterion 1 curricular aspects in this criteria all the information pertaining to the curriculum development curriculum enrichment curriculum planning academic flexibility feedback about the curriculum any new courses or value added courses introduced into the curriculum everything will be discussed in the curricular aspect and criteria 2 teaching learning and evaluation here the procedure involved in the teaching learning process right from the academic calendar lesson planning course file course material preparation teaching aids and assessment tools course outcome mapping the course outcome with the program outcome and program specific outcome so all this thing pertaining to the teaching learning evaluation will be discussed here the criterion 3 research innovations and extension here the resources for research resource mobility extension activities awards and rewards for research work and funded projects fund received from various institutions collaboration activities mou signed with other institutions and industries organizations will be discussed in criteria 3 and criteria 4 deals with the infrastructure and learning resources the classroom infrastructure building infrastructure learning resources library infrastructure it resource and maintenance procedure everything will be discussed in the criteria 4 under infrastructure and learning resources criteria 5 deals with the student support and progression here the student mentoring system student scholarship student participation in the vocational education and training gate coaching competitive examination placement training higher education and alumni interaction will be discussed in criteria 5 criteria 6 deals with about the governance leadership and management here how we are going to implement the vision mission and the financial aspects everything will be discussed in the criterion 6 criterion 7 deals about the institutional values and best practices so these are all of the seven criteria these seven criteria carries 1000 mark each criteria carries separate mark the total mark is 1000 institutional information for quality assessment iaqa this is the first document which we are going to upload in the nac portal this will contain aishe code number name of the institution name and profile of the head of the institution institution profile trust details affiliating university accreditation status number of programs offered ugg recognition status number of teaching and non teaching staff status details about the number of batches passed out mou details details of committees for effectiveness will be discussed in the iaqa in addition to this we have to submit a self declaration and undertaking in a prescribed form once this iaqa is approved we have to go for preparation of ssr and submit the ssr within 45 days so this is the ssr self study report this contains five chapters first one is executive summary profile extended profile quality indicator framework and the conclusion so uh, executive summary executive summary contains introduction in this part we will discuss about the vision mission 
and what are the action plan taken to achieve the vision mission everything will be discussed then spark analysis strength weakness opportunity and challenge analysis have to be done and documented in this chapter then criteria wise summary for all the seven criteria what is our action plan we are going to implement in the institution have to be documented in this executive summary the second one is the profile basic information academic information and evaluative report of department and our basic information will give the basic details about the institution location building etc the academic information we will give the number of batches passed out number of admission number of courses offered everything related to academic we will give the evaluative report of department a detailed evaluation report of each department in the institution will be done and documented in this part and extended profile this contains list of courses offered across all programs during last 5 years number of students enrolled year wise during last 5 years number of seats earmarked for reserved category number of outgoing or final year students year wise during the last 5 years number of full time teachers presently working in the institution number of sanctioned post year wise during the last 5 years so here we will provide lot of data the uh, all the data as provided in this extended profile will be automatically populated into the criteria wherever the data as are required it will be automatically populated to the concerned criteria we, we need not repeat the data in this criteria then this is the quality indicator framework qaf this is a major this plays a major role in ssr preparation this only carries marks here only marks will be allotted it contains 1000 marks so qif affiliate pertaining to affiliated colleges contains 32 key indicators for each key indicators separate weightage and mark is given the total mark is 1000 this 32 key indicators are again divided into 121 matrix this 121 based upon the 2019 version in 2020 the 121 matrix has been reduced to 96 in the quality manual again this 121 matrix is classified into quantitative matrix and qualitative matrix under quantitative matrix we have 80 parameters for this 80 parameters we have to sub submit the data the data must be uploaded in the prescribed format for which the data template is available in the nag portal we have to download the templates which is in excel format we have to fill the excel sheet the 80 excel sheet we have to fill and upload to substantiate all the data in this 80 excel sheet we have to attach scanned copy of supporting documents so this 80 parameters contains 80 excel sheet along with the required supporting documents then qualitative matrix Qualitative matrix contains 41 matrix. For this 41 matrix, we have to prepare 41 number of one page write up about the action plan of the each parameters mentioned under qualitative parameters. Here, this part, this write up only we have to give. We, we need not submit the documents. These documents will be verified by the peer team members. Whereas in quantitative matrix, we have to upload all the necessary documents along with the SSR. All these documents will be scrutinized by the DVB and assessment will be done by the DVB. So these are 121 matrix are qualified into quantitative and qualitative matrix. Quantitative matrix is 80, qualitative matrix is 41. The next, this is the key indicators, criteria wise matrix. Criteria 1 curricular aspects, which contains 4 key indicators. These 4 key indicators include 9 quantitative metrics and 2 qualitative metrics. These key indicators are curriculum planning and implementation, academic flexibility, curriculum enrichment, feedback system. Each key indicator carries separate weightage. The total weightage for this criteria is 100. Then criteria 2. Teaching, learning, and evaluation, it contains seven key indicators. These seven key indicators include 14 quantitative metrics and the nine qualitative metrics. These 14 and nine qualitative metrics include student enrollment and profile, catering to student diversity, teaching learning process, teacher profile and quality, 
evaluation process and reforms student performance and learning outcomes student satisfaction survey this contains 350 marks and criterion 3 research innovation and extension this includes five key indicators 14 quantitative parameters and two qualitative parameters the five indi key indicators includes research resource mobilization for research innovation ecosystem research publication and awards extension activities collaboration the total weightage for this criteria is 120 and criteria 4 infrastructure and learning resources this includes 4 kis this 4 ki contains 10 quantitative parameters and 5 qualitative parameters they are physical facilities library as a learning resource it infrastructure maintenance of campus infrastructure this criteria weightage is 100 then criteria 5 student support and progression four key indicators are there which includes 13 quantitative parameters and two qualitative parameters the student support student progression student participation and activities alumni engagement the total weightage for this criteria is 130 And criteria six, quantitative metric seven, qualitative metric twelve, key indicators five, institutional vision and leadership, strategy development and deployment, faculty empowerment strategies, financial management resource mobilization, internal quality assurance system. The total weightage for this criteria is hundred. And criteria seven, institutional values and best practices, which includes three key indicators. 13 quantitative metrics 9 qualitative metrics the institutional values and social responsibilities best practices and institutional distinctness these are the seven criteria which includes 1000 mark the next one is criteria wise weightage for criteria one curricular aspect 100 marks teaching learning and evaluation 350 research innovation and extension 120 infrastructure and learning resources 100 student support and progress 130 governance leadership and management 100 institutional values and best practice 100 total mark is 1000 this is the model evaluation sheet for each criteria for each ki there are certain weightage and the expert will give the assessment like 0 1 2 3 4 if they give 4 means 20 into 4 will get 80 marks if the mill they will give 3 means 20 into 3 60 they will give 0 means you will get 0 here i have given 4 and 3 for this criteria curriculum planning and implementation 20 into 4 80 academic flexibility 30 into 4 120 curriculum enrichment 30 into 3 90 feedback system 20 into 3 60 so total mark is 350 for this criteria and criteria 2 1260 criteria 3 430 criteria 4 380 criteria 5 450 criteria 6 370 criteria 7 370 the overall institutional cgpa for criteria 1 curricular aspects 350 marks teaching learning and evaluation 1260 research innovation and extension 430 institution infrastructure and learning resources 380 student support and progress and 450 criteria 6 governance leadership and management 370 criteria 7 institutional values and best practices 370 total mark is 3650 institutional cgpa is calculated by 3650 divided by 1000 that is equal to 3.65 is the institutional cgpa for accreditation so this is the assessment outcome Based on the CGPA, the, the letter grade is given to the institution. If we get 3.76 to 4, we'll get A plus plus. 3.51 to 3.75 A plus. 3.01 to 3.50 A. 2.76 to 3 B plus plus. 2.51 to 2.75 B plus. 2.01 to 2.50 B. 1.51 to 2 C. 
less than d less than 1.5 means d grades not accredited so these are the overall assessment for accreditation thank you very much please subscribe this channel and share your comment thank you very much